We're very glad to greet all of you in the name of Christ tonight. <clears throat> As we have gathered together unto edification, we welcome those of you who are with us on live stream also. <clears throat> Your presence means very much to us. This will be the 28th message in this series on the coming of the Lord. Messages from this point on will be dealing with some erroneous teachings connected with the coming of the Lord and the importance of understanding it correctly. <clears throat> Amen. Once again, let me read this text for in Revelation 20, verses 5 and 6. It is an intriguing text. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such a second death hath no power. Amen. But they shall be priests of God in Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. <clears throat> now in Scripture, an epoch or a very high lofty point or occurrence is generally surrounded by a, a number of things that are pertinent things that assist a person in identifying when the time referenced is taking place. And in this it's being confirmed to us that it's God who works all things for his own purpose and according to his will and in his own time. But we're talking about tonight, as is true of all everything connected with the coming of Christ, what men do have no bearing on it yeah. at all. Uh -huh. The things of God that God has purposed cannot just happen on their own, like yeah. some automatic thing you see wound up a clock and let it go and it just happens. It's not the way it happens at all. Some sort of an automated sequence. That would actually detract from the Lord if that was the case. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I want to establish before I go into detail on this that there are certain things that God has appointed to be accomplished mm -hmm. before Jesus comes. Yes. And He's appointed a time for them to happen. He hasn't told us those times. Remember the disciples one time asked, well, will you restore the kingdom unto Israel at this time? Well, it's not for you to know the times or seasons. He didn't say, well, that's, we're not going to do that. He misunderstood the whole thing. That's not what he said. It's says, not for you to know the times or the seasons which God has placed in his own power. That is, salvation is not assisted by you knowing things like that. This is not going to assist you in working out your own salvation with fear and trembling if you knew the precise time that Jesus was coming or, or the, what our text is referring to. This would not give you no advantage in the good fight of faith. That, that's why it's kept from us. Yeah, amen. See, the world is governed by divine purpose, not by happenstance. The world is not governed by how well the church does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This isn't what makes the world to be governed by God. It's not determined by the length of the preparation, but by the appointed time. So if you knew what was going to lead into the coming of the Lord, there are some people who say, let's, let's make that happen, and if we get that happen, then the Lord will come sooner. And there's some people think this way now. When an appointed time comes, it takes place, even though almost always it doesn't appear as though that's the time. Mm -hmm. Take the birth of Isaac. <laughs> it didn't look like that was the time. Mm -hmm. The promise was made some years before that. Mm -hmm. it, di it didn't look like this was the time, but that was the time. Yeah. And Israel delivered from Egypt. At the time. It didn't look like that was the time. It, was, it looked like that was the worst time. <laughs> The worst experience they've been having. It didn't look like this was the time, yeah. but it was. 
and the birth of Christ. It didn't look like this was a time. See, things had lapsed into mediate, spiritual mediocrity and corruption, and the leaders were perverse, and this just didn't look like the time that that would happen. And when Jesus was crucified, see, it didn't look like this was a, the time. His ministry had been a burgeoning success. People were flocking out to hear him, you remember, right up until almost to the last. It didn't look like this was a time for the sins of the world to be laid upon him. And when Jesus rose from the dead, it, it didn't look like the time. Not, even the disciples didn't suspect this was the time. Yeah, they right. didn't. He told him he was going to rise from the dead, but it, it didn't look like it was timely at that time. And when Pentecost came, it didn't look like it was the time. Jesus didn't say, and the Holy Spirit will come to you on the day of Pentecost. That's not what he says. It's not many days. Mm -hmm. Well, this just appeared to be a Jewish feast. Mm -hmm. Recollect their deliverance from Egypt. This didn't look like the time, but that was the yeah. that was the time. Now I'm going to identify two things that God has said going to happen before Jesus comes. Uh -huh. One is the conversion of Israel, mm -hmm. and the other is the knowledge covering the earth as the waters cover the sea. Uh -huh. I want to establish that these are things that God uh, has declared. These are going to happen. And these can happen. It may look like it, it's not the time for it to happen, but they can happen suddenly. It doesn't take a long time for either one of these things to happen. Isaiah 30, 26 says, Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. Amen. That's going to happen. Amen. Hmm? Israel's suffering right now from a stroke of a wound. But God's going to heal them from that. Amen. Then we have this promise of the new covenant in Jeremiah 31. <clears throat> Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. He doesn't say, but don't worry, I'm going to substitute somebody else for them. Oh, no, no. That's right. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers the day I brought them out, took them out by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this is the covenant, just so you be sure, yeah. that I will make with the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Is he just... Yeah. Amen. <laughs> After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts mm -hmm. and write it in their hearts, and it'll be their God, and they shall be my people. They shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Well, that's God that said that now. Here's Ezekiel's word. Ezekiel 36. 25, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of the flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Amen. Now, unless you're going to say that God goes back on his promises, now you gotta <laughs> you gotta wrestle with this is a promise. This is something God said he's gonna do. Yes. And before this world ends, that's gonna be done. 
And before Jesus comes, which is going to be at the end of the world, that, that's going to be done before he comes. And it's not going to take a long, lengthy process for it to happen. Amen. Ezekiel 37, 14, this is the chapter of the Valley of Dry Bones, which he said was the whole house of Israel, the bones of the house of Israel. Raising them up, he told them, that, well, what he's going to do, he's going to raise them up. Verse 14 of that chapter says, And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land, and then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. All right, that's a... I'm going to put my spirit in you, and I'm going to put you in your land. Doesn't look like it'd be done. A lot of people deny, emphatically deny. Mm -hmm. I do not respect the people that deny this. Yeah. In fact, the truth were known, I rather despise them for contradicting God. When yeah. God says, This is what I'm going to do, yeah. how dare any man say he's not going to do it? Amen. Amen. And Paul, I want to bring his witness into this, Romans the 11th chapter, verse 7 through 18. It's a little bit lengthy, but it's a line of reasoning. What then? Let's say what he said. All right, let's, let's, let's think about this for a while. Israel hath not obtained that which she, he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, Eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David also saith, Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stomach block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and bow down their back all way. That's why they're in the state they're in. Yes. It's not really because of what they did, it's because of what God did. Yes. And what they did had something to do with that. I understand that, but it's what God did. He asked the question, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? No, some people say yes. The Gentiles took their place. God forbid. Don't even think that. But rather through their fall, salvation has come to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now that's why the Gentiles take their place. So the Gentiles are provoke them to jealousy. Yeah. Now he reasons on this. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? What about when they're made complete? <laughs> if this happened when they fell, what about when they're given life? What's yeah. that going to do? Now I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means, why am I preaching to you Gentiles? Because I really have a heart to convert the Gentiles? Well, yeah, I do have it, but that's not really the root reason. I magnify my novice. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them that are my flesh and might save some of them. So Paul is preaching to the Gentiles so that the Jews could be saved. That's what he said. In the Greek, he said this. Right. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be? Yeah, yeah. He some people say, "Well, you're not going to receive him anymore. Mm -hmm. Send those men home. Yeah. Uh -huh. They have no right to speak for God. God has told us what He's going to do." Yes. And here some of these harebrains are saying he's not going to do it. Yeah. Huh? Well, what else does that apply to? That he that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ not be ashamed, that apply to that text too? How many things has God promised that he's not going to do? Now that these people brought this up, I think they're under obligation to delineate. Some of the other things God said he was going to do that he really isn't going to do. Yeah. Amen. If they don't want to talk about it now, it will be brought up on the day of judgment. Yeah. We know it because God of judgment is going to be justified in all his sayings. Yeah. And to this point, we've been talking about what God said. Yeah. 
it. So if they cast away them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? That is, it will spark a great move. Amen. But if the first fruit be holy, that's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. He's talking about the Jewish yeah, trees. Yeah. Talk, the Gentiles don't have, they're a wild olive tree. Amen. Yeah. It's a wild olive tree. This is what he said, the branches are holy. Mm -hmm. That is, God, God hasn't eliminated them. God didn't dig up this tree. Yeah. Amen. And if some of the, what? Yeah. What? 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 I heard it taught in our fair city. I heard it. Mm. That they have been cut off. Yeah. All of them. Mm. Oh, yeah. I could walk to the place where I heard it. Mm. Still saying it. Mm. And it's still wrong. Yeah, right. Some, mm. some of the branches were broken off. And thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in, not in their place, among. Yeah, amen. Amen. That's in the Greek too. Yes. Among them. Mm -hmm. And with them yeah. partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. That tree, that Jewish tree, yeah. mm -hmm. is what's keeping you alive. Amen. amen. Yeah. Boast not against the branches. Mm. <laughs> They were cut off so we could be grafted in. Yeah, that's what he said. Some, you will say that? Oh, he said, they, they were cut off because of unbelief. And you're standing by faith, so you better watch out. You're not Amen. cut off. Amen. See? Boast not against the branches. Don't be bragging about the fact that they're not in, you are. If thou boast, thou bearest not the root. This is the Holy Spirit reveal this, just in case anybody forgot. The Holy Spirit reveal this. You don't bear the root, which is a Jewish root. It's not a Gentile root. But the root, the, so if it's plucked, listen, if this tree's been plucked up, we are too. We've been connected to this tree. So if it's been cut down, there's no hope for us either. Now, see, my point is, this is going to have, God has said he's going to do this. Paul reasons that this is going to be done and that great things are going to be a result from it. <clears throat> now, at this point, I want to deal with a divine reasoning on this. About the Jews being cut off of the Gentile might be grafted in and so forth. This first is found in Deuteronomy 32, 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, which is a Bible word for idols. And I will move them to jealousy. <laughs> I said, I will move them to jealousy by those which are not a people. Yeah. I will provoke them to anger by a foolish nation. Yeah. All right, now Paul, he reasons on this too. Romans 11, 11 through 14. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvations come to the Gentiles for, for, salvations come to the Gentiles for, to provoke them to jealousy. Then he gets his reason for his ministry. I speak to you Gentiles for as much as I'm an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office if by any means I may provoke which is God said to Moses do, provoke them to emulation, which are my flesh, and might save some of them. So this is, this is something God has said he's going to do. 
He gave you the rationale. Israel provoked God to jealousy by worshiping other gods. So he said, I'm going to make them jealousy by favoring on other people. After I told them that I love them and chose them, I'm going to provoke them to jealousy by loving another people. Yeah. All right, listen to what I'm saying. The modern church is not convincing anybody that God loved it. If anything, it's raising some questions. Sometime, this is going to happen. The Jews are going to see the Gentiles and what they have, and they're going to get jealous, and they're going to turn to God. That's going to happen. That's the conversion of the Gentiles that we're talking about. Right, so, so that's number one, something that happened before Jesus comes. The second thing is that the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Now the church has been here for 2,000 plus years and it still hasn't got this done. In fact, it was only under the administration of the Jews that the gospel, Paul said, was preached to every creature under heaven before 60 A.D., but the Gentiles have never duplicated that. They've been trying now for 2,000 years, and they still haven't got it done, and they're not making many inroads in the same day. We're still hearing about nations that have never heard about Christ. We're still hearing about it. The early church did its job. It was a Jewish church that did it, too. Before the first century, a little after, halfway past the first century, they'd already done it. But the, but the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth. How do the waters cover the sea? Huh? Is there a bunch of islands in there somewhere? As the that the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. That means they're, it's going to be predominant. I don't know how else you could interpret that. That's what it means. So let's look at that. Now does the Lord cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Here's Psalm 22, and that's a messianic psalm. If you're familiar with Psalm 22, that's a psalm about the suffering Savior. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. This is the Holy... <laughs> if you believe the scriptures are inspired by God, this is what the Holy Spirit said this. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. Yeah. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he's the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. Mm -hmm. Is it be accounted to the Lord for a generation? They shall come... And shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he hath done this. Amen. All right, that uh, pretty much speaks for itself. All the ends of, it, this is going to be recognized that God did this. Amen. Here's Isaiah 11, 9. For the earth shall be filled, shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Here's Zechariah 8, 23. Ten men, now this is the Holy Spirit talking, this is God saying this. This is a, a, a hope to a hope so type thing. Yeah. Ten men of all languages even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Right. Has that happened yet? Is there is there any historian that will allege that's happened yet? Is there some fool that is willing to allege it won't happen? Who would dare to say that'll never happen? When God said it would. Amen. Psalm ninety and verse four.
I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that to later. So I'm gonna say that one to later. Habakkuk says this same thing about the knowledge of the Lord to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. That's going to uh, going to happen. Now, Paul said that his ministry was to provoke the Jews to jealousy. Now I am going to allege that the modern church and the church throughout the centuries has largely rejected Paul's ministry. Uh -huh. yes. They've not taken up what he said. Some movements have recovered, they captured some of the things he said and they shook the world with it. But the Gentile church of all the Bible that they don't understand, yeah. Paul's writing is at the top. All the Bible colleges know this. All the seminaries know this. Everyone of learning knows this, that what Paul wrote is not commonly accepted and propagated by the modern church. Someone says that's being too critical. Well, we deserve to be critical about it. Now we know... In the beginning, there were those who did preach this gospel were martyred. We get a picture of them, as I'll introduce later in Revelation, the twentieth chapter, which is the chapter which our text is found. There were those who were beheaded for the name of the Lord. They are under the altar, and it looked historically like they were wrong. He said, how long? Yeah. How long till you avenge our blood? He said, wait a while, now wait. No, it's, not, it's not time yet. Yeah. Not, what did he mean, avenge their blood? Kill off their enemies? I don't think that's what he meant. I mean, how long till the power of this gospel? Yeah. How, he said, wait, wait, now wait a while. Mm -hmm. There's some other servants that have to be killed first. And then at the appropriate time, this message that pre they preached mm -hmm. that cost them their lives, it's not being preached today. Now, if someone says it has, they're just simply uninformed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The message the martyrs preached is not being preached today, yeah. anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand there's individual places. When I say anywhere, I mean like any continent or things like this. Uh -huh. The message they preached is there's a different kind of a gospel being preached, and it's not working. Right, it's not producing a holy people. Mm -hmm. It's not producing a godly people. It's not producing an interested people or a sacrificial people mm -hmm. or an obedient people. It's not doing it. I know you can point out where it has, but they're the exception. You know they are. Uh -huh. It's the exception when you find something really yeah. firm that's yeah. resulting yeah. from what's being said. So now what I'm going to still edge is that the first resurrection is the spirit of these martyrs coming back like Elijah has come back and John in will come back. It'll come back and the message they preach will be vindicated. Amen. Their their extent of their personal involvement I, I don't profess to know. But that kind of people. See, John the Baptist was a type of the Elijah that the prophet said, Eli yeah. Elijah shall come. Yeah. And the disciples asked Jesus, what do the scribes mean when they say that Elijah will come? And the first words out of Jesus' mouth, which was several, it was sometime after John the Baptist had been martyred. Uh -huh. he, his first words were, Elijah shall come. Uh -huh. yeah. That was his first words. Yeah. Nevertheless, for thee that shall, shall receive it, John the Baptist, he came in the spirit and power of Elijah, but, but, he did not turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. He did not turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. As a matter of fact, the people did to him whatever they wanted. That wasn't the Elijah the prophet was talking about. And Jesus told his disciples that was the case. Now, what I'm showing you is that 
in some way Elijah is going to, I don't know if it's really going to be Elijah himself or someone who has his spirit. I'm inclined to think it's someone who has his spirit. But that's the kind of thing that we're talking about with these murders. Their cause is going to flourish. See, the gospel really is the power of God unto salvation. Now, it, this is a true statement. It's been revealed, and Paul's the one that revealed it. But when it's not preached, nobody gets the power. You can't have the power independently of the gospel. And the gospel that's preached today is just a mamby-pamby gospel. It's not real. It's another gospel. And early in the first century, there were some people started preaching another gospel. But this first resurrection, it's a different kind of resurrection. Yeah. In fact, this is the only place in the Bible that we read the words first resurrection. Mm -hmm. And we never read resurrection in the plural. Mm -hmm. right. We never read of resurrections. There's only one bodily yes. resurrection. Yes. This is a different kind of a resurrection. It's not the new birth. Mm -hmm. Because the new birth does not make you impervious to the second death because you can fall away. See? You understand that, don't you? There are some people think that you're, wait, when you're saved, you're impervious to the second death. But no, this is not the, it's not the case at all. You've got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Second death is a very present danger. If you begin to be sloppy and slothful and all this, second death, but this, in this case, second death has no power. Would mean these martyrs can't be shut down. This message is going to be preached. And that's what the martyrs were known for. They'll not be able to shut it down. Today, the world's been able to shut down the gospel that's being preached. Some uh -huh. yeah. people just quit, stop preaching altogether. Don't. It's because it's not the right gospel. We know it's not the right gospel because it's not doing what the gospel yeah. does. Right. You read the book of Acts, that's what yeah. the gospel does. Mm -hmm. You're reading what the gospel does in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. So the cause of the martyrs will flourish. In some way, the spirit of the martyrs will come back. They'll reign a thousand years. This, this is the only place in the Bible that the thousand years is mentioned this way. Uh, the, the expression thousand years is mentioned a couple other places. Ecclesiastes 6, 6 says, Yea, though he live a thousand years, twice told. So that's the like, that's not the sense he used in here in this text. Peter said a thousand years is as one day, and and one day is a thousand years. But that's that's not how a thousand years is used here. A thousand years in these is like an interminable, uh, unidentifiable period of lengthy time. But this thousand years here, this is speaking of the triumph of the gospel. When the knowledge of the Lord covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. I don't want to lose the yeah. connection to these two things. The conversion of Israel mm -hmm. and the knowledge of God covering the earth as the waters cover the sea. Mm -hmm. Now there's something that's going to precede this that was revealed to John. <clears throat> he says in Revelation 20 verse 2, an angel, an angel did this. He laid hold of the, on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Yeah. Uh -huh. So whatever this thousand years is, Satan's not going to be able to work. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. The angel's going to pitch him in the pit and lock him up, keep him there for a thousand years. See, this a revelation is not a doctrinal book. It's a vision. It's a vision. You've got to see that. What he's saying is when Satan is bound up and taken out of activity, the gospel will <laughs> it'll just spread like wildfire. And it's going to be a, the real gospel because the spirit of the martyrs is going to be there. It's going to be what Paul said, I've been, 
I'm preaching to stir up the Jews of jealousy. And when the Gentiles start preaching what Paul preached, that's what it'll do. As long as they keep up preaching what the psychiatrists say and all this sort of thing, that's not going to do this. It's not going to make the Jews jealous at all. God said, that's how, that's, how I'm, that's how I'm going to get at the Jews. I'm going to make them jealous by turning my attention to a people that are not a people. They're not a recognizable body of people. And that's going to... Well, it just is that Jews aren't jealous of the Gentile church. If they were, they'd be beating a path to it. And unbelievers aren't going to go to the Jews saying, show us your God. <laughs> we know that God's with you. Tell us about your God. They're not coming to the Gentile church either. Oh, one here and there. I understand that this it does mean nobody does, but it does is not happening on any large scale. <clears throat> So the first, uh, the gospel will exhibit its power during this time, during the spiritual resurrection. This is what Ezekiel's vision of the waters was all about. Exodus 40, or Ezekiel 40, 47. The waters came out from under the throne, they issued from, from heaven, and at first they were just ankle deep. Went a little further, and they were knee deep. Went a little further, and they were up to the loins. Pretty soon, it was a vast river that you couldn't get, you couldn't cross over. Started out small, from under the throne. Proceeded, and it healed every place it went. It healed except a few marshy places. A few marshy places it didn't heal. So when it says the nods of the Lord will cover the earth, it doesn't mean everybody's going to be born again. It doesn't mean that. Mm -hmm. But it means the majority will. Yeah. The church isn't destined to always be the minority. Yeah. Amen. God has prophesied there's going to come a time when those that trust in God are going to be the majority, yeah. not the minority, and that's going to prove God's God. Amen. God's word is true. Yes. What God has said, he'll do. That'll prove it, see? Yeah. Now men just theorize about it because you can't present that kind of proof today. During the early church, there were things that took place that, <laughs> by Peter that people clamored to, to get under Peter's shadow. Mm -hmm. yeah. They say, well, that age has passed. Well, we know it's passed. Why did it pass? That's, that's the question. Yeah. I'm saying... It passed because the gospel stopped being preached. Yeah. That's yeah. what I am alleging. Yeah. I do reserve the right to be wrong, but I don't. I don't think I'm wrong on this. And Ezekiel's vision of the dry bones. God told him what that was. He said he's going to raise Israel up, put spirit, put the, his spirit in them, and put them in their land. That's what he said. Now this is what God said. And what was going to make a change to those bones? It was a message. He said, preach, mm -hmm. prophesy, prophesy to these bones. So what was it that he prophesied to those bones? He didn't say, how come you're laying here in this valley, all spread out, a bunch of dry bones? What's the matter with you that you've been disobedient? Prophesied had upbraided him before. That's not what God told him. Don't, don't tell him that. Tell the people this. I'm going to put my spirit in you. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to cause you to walk in my statutes. I'm going to put you in your land, and you'll yeah. glorify me. Amen. And when these old dry bones mm -hmm. heard that message, all of a sudden flesh began to come on the bones. Amen. And then skin came on the bones. Yes. And pretty soon they were whole bodies where they were, they, before they weren't even skeletons, they were scattered bones. They were whole bodies, skeletal structure, flesh and bone, but they were still dead. And uh, God said, now, all right, now, uh, prophesy to the wind. Say to the wind, oh, spirit, breathe on these bones. They got all the orthodoxy there. 
All the form is there. Yeah. Breathe on these bones. When he did, they stood up yes. an army. And something else, they find out about this valley of dry bones. They were killed. They were murdered. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. They just didn't die old age. They were, they were taken out by violence. And they stood up a great army. And then, uh, then you have the 48th chapter tells you what, what God was going to do with them. And the book of the Revelation does too. It's going to bind Satan. Satan so can't interfere. Raise up the natural tree. Raise it up again. Put life in it. Satan will not be able to hinder this at all. It's going to be a Successful, and then they were these spirits that came back in so, in some form. I'm not sure how how this how they will come back. <clears throat> he said in the fourth verse of Revelation 20, I saw thrones. Before these were under the throne. He said I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in his hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, if you're willing to not buy into the substitutes that are being offered, if, if you are willing to take into yourself the true gospel and to reject false gospels, your day will come. Amen. We may not be far from this, I don't know, but when it is, when we, there'll have to be a major adjustment in the thinking of the uh -huh. church because <laughs> it's going to be the head mm -hmm. and not the tail. Yes. It's going to be on the top, not on the bottom. And yes. God's going to demonstrate that what he said about the gospel is the absolute, unvarnished, and unmitigated truth. Yes. That it is God's power unto salvation. Yes. And if ever anybody can get hold of it mm -hmm. and have the spirit of the martyrs, so to speak, rejuvenated in them, God will use them Amen. to undo That's right. everything the devil yeah. has done. Now we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness or under the power of the wicked one is what that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What that means. But God's reserved a protracted period of time. Yes. Precisely how long it is, I don't know. A thousand years is, depicts a, a lengthy, uh -huh. unidentifiable period of time. But God's, it will be sufficient time that all doubts will be removed about whether this thing is real or not. God's going to be justified yes. in the face of all people. Amen. Be similar to John the Baptist of whom it was said, he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That kind of ministry was introduced by John the Baptist. Yeah. The Jews had never heard a preacher like John the Baptist. He didn't go to the people. The people came to him. That's a new kind of evangelism. But that's exactly the kind that the prophet said would happen. He said the Gentiles are going to come to the Jews and take hold of their skirts. They're, the lost are going to be on the initiative. That's what, it, that's what he said. They're going to be on the initiative. We're now the saved on the initiative to try and reach the lost. And they're having a, they have a challenging assignment to do it. Now just, uh, just briefly, when the disciples asked Jesus, said, they said, what did the scribes mean when they said Elijah will, go, will come? He said, his first words, truly, Elias, truly, yes. shall come first and restore all things. Amen. That's be first before his coming. Mm -hmm. 
But I say unto you that Elias has come already, and they knew him not. Yeah, that's not the kind of Elijah that Malachi and Isaiah prophesied. But they have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise also shall a suffer, son of man suffer many things. So they did the same thing to Jesus. They did the same thing to Jesus. He was really the son of God, but did the same thing to Jesus. But after Jesus was glorified. Oh, that was a different story. When the day of Pentecost has fully come, you saw what Jesus could do. Amen. And when this day we've been talking about comes and Israel is converted and the pure gospel is preached, you're going to see what Christ can do. I remember in Revelation 7th chapter, John in a vision, he saw the conversion of Israel in a vision. He saw 144,000 virgins. They weren't defiled. After these things, John said, John 7, 1, or Revelation 7, 1, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice, to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the, and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. <clears throat> and then the ninth verse, it tells you who they were. After this I beheld, lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations, kindreds, people, tongues, stood on before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with the white robes and palms in their hands, and cried a loud voice, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and upon the Lamb. See, the waters have covered the earth, and the conversion of Israel, the thing that prompted it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll leave it that for you to think upon. It's a lot to think upon, but you, you want to start out and end up with what God said. So I'll give you five reasons why this vision is recorded. To confirm that Satan is a controlled adversary. That's first. You've got to see this. Now. Satan is a controlled adversary. Second, to confirm that Christ's work is greater and more pervasive than Satan's work. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Amen. Third, to confirm that the promises and covenants of God are not in vain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Four, to confirm that the word belongs to God and the world belongs to God and is governed by Jesus. Mm -hmm. yes. And fifth, to confirm that no labor in the Lord is vain, yeah. even if it's finished after you die. Yes. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Now that's teach the good news to yes. me. Amen. Yeah, Brother Robert has our exhortation.